guys get this. My mom and my sister broke me up from my last relationship. I'll get into details about how they did that. That's not important right now. What's important is they're trying to do it again. And I'm not going to let it slide. Ugh, where do I even begin with my family? It's like I have unwittingly created monsters in my own home. I wish I could blame somebody or something specific, but it's a tangled mess. Helping them for years has not made a dent in their attitude. It's my mom and sister. Can you believe it? After wrecking my first real relationship of merely five months, they've got in their heads to do it again. Maybe it's bitterness, or maybe they're just experts at making my life a living hell. I don't know, so here I am venting on this post. I guess it's my coping mechanism now. I'm desperate for a solution here, I've tried everything. Cutting them off, therapy, you name it, but it's like talking to a brick wall. So, what do you do when your own flesh and blood seem hell-bent on ruining your happiness? Especially when you have a serious relationship on the line. I'm all ears for some advice that goes beyond the classic cut them out of your life spiel. Maybe there's a way to make them realize they cannot treat me like this anymore, with a dash of serious consequences. Hey, I'm Ava, 32, and my life has been one of a relentless hustle. I've worked more than I've ever known peace. It was all thanks to my lovely family, let me unravel the chaos in my life, and maybe you'll get why I'm this desperate and in need of help. Dad was the ultimate pushover, no doubt about it. He let mom walk all over him, fulfilling her every whim like he was born to be her doormat. You could call him a simp. And trust me, he would not be offended. That was the honeymoon phase of their marriage, and then I came into the picture, right? And suddenly, dad expected mom to step up financially or at least manage the household. But surprise, surprise, my mother, Lydia, had a talent for ignoring memos. She stayed home doing next to nothing, and I practically raised myself. Well, things got a bit better when my sister Lauren was born, but it was a microscopic improvement. By the time I hit 18, any changes in my mom's behavior might as well have been non-existent. It did not matter if she made an effort because everything fell apart after the family tragedy. My father died in a work accident, and she effortlessly slipped back into her old ways like putting on an old, comfortable sweater. For her, it was an easy transformation. For me, it was like, uh, the complete opposite. <laughs> it is practically a textbook, right? When one parent leaves or dies, the other steps up. At least that's how it's supposed to go. Except in my life, it never happened, and as I mentioned, she slipped back into her old ways, refusing to lift a finger. Dad left some money, but it was far from enough to make ends meet comfortably. I thought she needed time to grieve, so I silently picked up the slack. Now, imagine this. Just out of school, burdened with responsibilities far beyond my years, and for years it was the same exhausting routine. I managed the house, juggled the finances, and played the role of the responsible older sibling. All while barely catching my breath. But hey, who needs a break, right? Not me. But you know what the most discouraging thing was? Not a single word of gratitude. It was as if they have thought it was my job, like breathing or eating. No thank yous, no acknowledgement, nothing. They got comfortable and that was the end of the story because, you know, doing everything for the family is just a part of your job description. No big deal, right? Pouring my blood, sweat, and tears into our house, financing Lauren's education, and everything in between. You would think that they would be supportive of my choice, right? It seemed like they might be, but oh, they proved me dead wrong. And let me tell you, they did it in a way that made me keep my distance for a long, long time. I decided to confront them about living off my hard-earned money, and I think that hit a nerve. When Lauren turned 22, I made the bold move to cut off the monthly allowances and told her it was high time she started working. Needless to say, it did not sit well with them. Seeing their tears, I only gave them half of what I used to, but they were not satisfied. That's when I realized how cautious I needed to be around them. Even then, they managed to win the game. 
So here's the tale of my first divorce and how my oh-so-loving family played a starring role. Brace yourself, guys. This is going to be a wild ride. You'll understand why I need my space. Honestly, anybody in my shoes would have done the same. Trust me, it was a survival tactic more than a choice. They have to come see me as their possession. Something they could control and manipulate to their whim. And you know what happens when you see somebody or something as your property? You make sure it stays yours. I did not realize the extent of their scheme until that fateful day when I caught my sister kissing my husband. Let me paint you a picture. It was just an ordinary evening at my home. Innocent enough, right? Oh, but no, because Lauren and my mom had a plan up their sleeve. I was in the bedroom, changing after a long day at work when I walked into the living area and witnessed the most surreal scene of my life. My home's layout meant that the kitchen was partially visible from the living room, and there they were. Lauren and my now ex-husband locked in a passionate kiss. It was beyond ridiculous. I did not say a word and just turned around and walked out. I ignored all their frantic phone calls and... When I came back home the next day, I brought divorce papers with me. My ex-husband sobbed and pleaded, but luckily I did not care about any of that. The divorce, it was pretty swift, and I was free. But the story does not end there, guys. Oh no, it doesn't. Next in line were Lauren and Mom. When I talked to them about it, they promised they knew about my ex-husband's character and just wanted me to see through his facade and also because they wanted to save me from his gold-digging nature. Well, I bought it. Stupidly, of course, uh, if you ask me, they accompanied me to a couple of therapy sessions that I had then, and it all seemed like it was coming from a supportive family. Oh no. But right when it started looking like that, I overheard their conversation one night. They were giggling, like schoolgirls, and told each other that they were surprised that I did not figure out their scheme. Then they started discussing what they would get from the alimony I received after the divorce. When I could no longer hold myself back, I barged into their room and asked them what are they talking about. It took some time, but then Lauren, well, she finally revealed that they were worried that after the marriage I would completely stop caring for them. So they devised a plan to separate my husband and me. The entire thing was so ridiculous that I took an immediate decision. I booked a hotel right away and told them that I was cutting them off from my life, just like my ex-husband. They cried and cried, but I didn't care. I decided that I did not want to see them anymore. For nearly four years, I kept my distance, crafting a new life and a new home, intentionally keeping my address from them. I had no idea how they managed during those years, and honestly, I didn't care. Some might label it toxic, but in the moment of homesickness and loneliness... I reached out to them. I mean, they were my family after all, and I also wanted to check up on them. I was shocked when I finally gave them a visit, and despite residing in the house that I provided, they looked utterly destitute and weary, as if the weight of those four years had aged them dramatically. There was resentment in their eyes when I attempted to step back into their lives, but eventually they broke down. Tears flowed as they recounted the struggles they endured, and I needed to understand if they were genuinely remorseful for what they have done to me. Surprisingly, they sounded sincere when they uttered those apologetic words. But hey, it was my fault that I believed they could be nice to me. It's amazing how quickly people can reveal their true colors, isn't it? A few months after introducing my new boyfriend, Charlie, to my family, I witnessed a side of them I had not seen before. To be honest, I'm thoroughly creeped out and their initial impressions were impressingly misleading. Especially with Charlie. They seem to have made quite an impression on him, even more so than on me. When I first told them about wanting them to meet Charlie, I had hoped for a positive experience. Instead, it turned out to be a nightmare, and as soon as they realized how serious we were about each other, they started playing these ridiculous victim cards painting me as this irresponsible brat who abandoned them in their misery without a second thought. And when they found out that Charlie wanted children, they went on a tirade about how I could be a terrible and irresponsible mother, listing examples to drive the point home. Naturally, 
I defended myself not wanting their poisonous words to affect how Charlie saw me. But instead of taking it seriously, they just brushed it off, claiming that they were joking. All while giggling like it was some twisted game. I'm seriously considering cutting them off for good, you know? I can't handle their drama anymore. Especially after what they just pulled last time. But then there's this nagging feeling like maybe I should just get some boundaries and hope for the best. I don't want Charlie to end up like my ex-husband did with Lauren. Ugh. Top comments from the original post. Comment number one. I'm gonna be honest. I'm sorry about your situation and your family sure does sound frustrating as heck, but I still think you can manage it all with a little talk. You know, just point out to them that you're good to go. Just because you like Charlie doesn't mean your sister is set to ruin your lives. And if you're still helping them with money, then cut it off. Simple as that. It's not genius work, you know. Nothing to cry about on the internet. Comment number two. Cutting them off from your life is the only thing I second from one of those comments. But honestly, it's clear as today your family is a gigantic duo. Of the worst kind of people ever. Ruining your marriage only because they wanted money. What the actual heck? What kind of family does that? Nobody deserves to deal with that BS, honey. You did what you had to do and you don't owe them crap. Now, cut them off. And honestly, if your boy is actually loyal to you, he would not even think of cheating on you with anybody, much less your sister. So rest assured about that. Update number one. Oh my gosh, you will not believe what my sister tried to pull again. I would have completely been clueless if Charlie had not spilled the beans when he got home from work. Bless his heart, he was too worried about how I would react, but he knew I had to know. Now, let me fill you in on the week that followed the first encounter. Honestly, most of the advice I got was to try setting boundaries instead of cutting my family off again. People kept saying, and I quote, You've already tried cutting them out, so why not give boundaries a shot? But here's the thing, guys. They're not your run-of-the-mill humans. They can act normal and mentally sound, but deep down, they are anything but. I mean, why else would they insult me like there's no tomorrow and then try to brush it off as a joke? That's enough to make me want to react for sure. It's like dealing with a bunch of emotional landmines. Can you believe somebody actually had the audacity to blame me for my mother and sister's behavior? Saying it's all because I cut them off before. Like, seriously, how is that my fault when they pulled this stunt just weeks after meeting Charlie? It's like they're waiting for an opportunity to create chaos. Well, guys, let me go ahead and fill you in on what happened in the weeks following the disastrous day. So, after I made the decision to keep Charlie away from them, Lauren's birthday rolled around. She invited both of us, but I was the only one who went. At first, things seemed okay, like maybe we could go back to some semblance of normalcy. But then when I was in the washroom and Charlie was waiting to pick me up, she took it upon herself to flirt with him. Can you believe it? Flirting with my boyfriend right under my nose, huh? You know, I initially thought that they were both to blame as this was the case with my first love. But when I saw Charlie pushing her away when she got too close... She ended up hurting herself and Charlie was immediately apologetic, but he never got near her to apologize or even pick her up. He was keeping his distance, unlike certain somebodies. It was crystal clear to me that he was innocent, unlike my first husband. That's why I've reached my breaking point and I'm desperate to teach them a lesson that they will never forget. I've made my mind up. I'm cutting them off from my life, no questions asked, but as for the stunt Lauren pulled, she's in for it. I'm going to make sure she faces the wrath of her actions. After this, they will have no choice but to finally stop their nonsense once and for all. Can you guys believe the audacity? Targeting my boyfriend was not the only thing they did. There was something else, and although it was less severe, it was still a serious breach of trust. Let me go ahead, tell you what happened. Before all of this mess, we went for a lunch date. The entire atmosphere was awkward because deep down I still did not believe their intentions were genuine. And guess what? My suspicions were correct. When I came back from the washroom and checked my purse on the way home, I realized almost all my cash was gone. 
Only a few crumpled up dollar bills remained and it made me so mad. Despite everything, I'd started giving them some money each month. Thinking I was helping them out and even then, they had the nerve to steal from me. I don't know. The audacity of it all just is beyond my comprehension. Well, I knew that because every single time we met up after a lunch date, my cash disappeared into thin air. It didn't matter if I was the one who always paid for everything, whether it be food or the transport, but they still stole from me. It was whole surprise for me because honestly, they had never done that before. When I confronted them about it, they nervously laughed and giggled and said they needed money because things were a little rough on their end. Honestly, things were rough for them. As I've told you about their current living situation in the first post, they look like they were barely keeping their heads above water. But stealing was not the answer. I told them I needed my money back when they were done dealing with their issues, and they promised that they would. Then the next time, well, we went out. They did it again. This time, instead of leaving a few bills in my purse, they drained it and left a couple of chocolates and a note that said, let's try to smile more, XOXO. Be honest with me, would you not be freaking mad at the no matter what you do, how close you guys are? I was furious that I could not take it anymore. I declined their new offers for dates, and thank goodness I have not yet shared my address with them. Given the number of calls and messages I received from them, it was pretty ridiculous and I was pretty sure that they would have eaten me alive at home. It's what setting boundaries looks like. In my case, it seemed like the only option left was to cut them off entirely. I did not even care about teaching them a lesson at this point. Well, police, that's the only solution for them, I swear. Update number two. I cannot believe I have to resort to this. I truly can't, but I did it. You remember how I mentioned the police might be the solution in my previous post ride? Well, it turns out that the cop solution is what I had to implement. If they refuse to learn the lesson on their own, then the long arm of the law will have to step in and give them a taste of reality. I'm about to take you on a whirlwind journey. Buckle up. It's going to go through the last four weeks of my chaotic life. The best part, though, is that they brought this upon themselves. I have no regrets about their current predicament. It all started when I decided to play hard to get and ignored their insistent calls and text messages. In the beginning, it was five, maybe six calls from each of them. But as time went on, desperation took over and the numbers shot up to a mind-boggling 20 or 21 calls from each family member. Annoying, but I knew that they were desperate. During the second week, they flooded my inboxes with messages, most of which contained apologies. Of course, I was not buying the sincerity of those words, but there were so many sorry messages that it made me wonder what had gotten into them. Then all of a sudden, they vanished and a new round of messages began. These mixed emotions were starting to get to me, and it was becoming increasingly clear that we were stuck in this infuriating, toxic family cycle. Haven't we all been there at some point? In the second week of my deliberate silence, they resorted to desperate measures. I received messages claiming that they were on the brink of financial ruin, to the point where they had to consider renting out the home that I poured my sweat and tears into, just to make ends meet. It's a bit embarrassing to admit, but I found myself caring more about the home than them. After all, it was a symbol of my hard work and dedication. So I made a decision and met them with a few thousand dollars in cash, hoping that it would put an end to this messy situation. But oh boy, I was wrong again. When I arrived home with the money, they showered me with praise for my kindness and they could not stop talking about how fortunate they were to have somebody as generous as me. The irony was not lost on me though. I could not reciprocate those feelings and as soon as the moments of gratitude ended, Lauren, true to her nature, began talking trash about Charlie. Some things never change, do they? Well, Lauren, in her typical dramatic fashion, was adamant that Charlie was nothing more than a natural-born cheater. She spun elaborate fake stories trying to distort the truth about the few instances where Charlie had met with her. It was maddening, yet oddly amusing, to witness the links that they were trying to go to keep me in their lives, even though that was the one thing slipping away from their grasp. Enough! was enough. 
I could not take their nonsense any longer. I made up my mind to walk away from their toxic games. However, when Lauren uh, boldly asked me for Charlie's address, claiming she would expose his disloyalty, I played along. Little did she know I was already scheming something devious in my mind. The tables were about to turn and they had no idea what the heck was coming their way. When I met up with Charlie, I filled him in on the family drama and he became more than just a little intrigued. His involvement in the scheme was almost comically enthusiastic. Strange, entertaining thing to say the least and as planned, we concocted a plan to give Lauren an address. An address belonging to, well, <laughs> a police officer. A face that would get very familiar to her who would ensure she faced the legal consequences of a lifetime. I'll admit I felt like a devilish mastermind orchestrating this elaborate plan. In my defense though, I had no clue what Lauren intended to do with the address. I'd envisioned her knocking at the officer's door or maybe throwing a fit before realizing it was a police officer and still getting herself in trouble. But she had far wilder plans up her sleeve. Plans I could not have possibly anticipated. In the dead of night, Lauren made her move. Instead of taking the rational route and knocking on the door like any normal person would, she scoured the house for an opening, finding an open window in the living room, slipping in with insane confidence, and she silently opened the front door to usher our mother inside. The whole thing unfolded in a mere two minutes, their movements practically soundless as they slink through the house, eventually reaching the bedroom. It was late at night, so the house was silent. There was only some distinct noise coming from the TV. So, they knew it was a comfortable moment. Before going into the bedroom, Lauren undressed a little and then barged into the room. Then the funniest thing ever, she was met with the stoic face of not one but four different police officers. I hate myself for not being present. But since none of the officers were in uniform, she still tried to move forward with her plan. She tried to loop all four men right there into her scheme to ruin their professional or personal lives, and my mom was standing behind her with the camera in her hands. But were they able to do it? No, of course not. They were arrested on the spot. And guess who made their arrest? Yeah, Charlie. Update number three. I think, just like I forgot to mention to Lauren and Mom, that Charlie is a police officer. <laughs> I guess I forgot to tell everybody that. Yes, Charlie's been in the law enforcement for almost a decade now. He has a house of his own and he lives with his mother. That night, when he caught Lauren and Mom like that, he had been with his buddies for a late night discussion on some murder case. Was that a coincidence? No, it was all planned more so by Charlie than me. When I informed Charlie about the family situation, he said that letting my family do as they please has made the situation worse. So, to make sure they learn their lesson better and leave me alone for good, we can give Lauren his address. So I gave them the address of Charlie, the police officer. It was his idea, not mine, laugh out loud. So we gave Lauren his address and then I thought she would try bothering him during the day, but that was not the case. Charlie had a clear idea about it. He knew long before me what my sister and mom could plan to do, so without telling me, he planned the other part of it. He deliberately left the window ajar and summoned his three colleagues for a much-needed discussion about a said murder case. Then Lauren and my mother did something utterly foolish. They crept into a house, not just any house, but a, well, police officers. Unsurprisingly, they were caught red-handed by four cops and promptly arrested. As for me, they cannot blame me. They wanted Charlie's number and I handed it over willingly. Now, they're facing multiple charges, including felony and resisting arrest. As it happens in this situation, well, just like this, they will have to spend some time behind bars. They drop burglary charges because of a lack of evidence, but they will still have to pay a fine and endure other penalties. The judge scolded them, stating their actions were incredibly foolish. If any of the officers acted swiftly to intervene, you two would have gotten injured, and that would have been entirely your fault. You see, during our last meeting before the police took them away, 
Lauren screamed at me for giving them a police officer's address, but come on, that's exactly what they asked for, Charlie's address. It's hardly my problem that Charlie's a police officer, and they concocted such a ridiculous plan. Since that day, I've encountered, well, them twice. The first time Lauren confessed that they planned to catch Charlie off guard, take intimate pictures with him and use them to blackmail him, in an attempt to break my relationship with him just as they tried before. And the revelation filled me with such rage that I stormed out of the prison and they trailed behind me wailing and sobbing as if their hearts were breaking. The next time I encountered them, I held an invitation card tightly in my hands, my voice dripping with sarcasm as I remarked how delighted I was that they were enjoying their meals in jail. No offense meant to those who prepare prison food, but it's hardly gourmet. Without missing a beat, I slid the invitation card over to my mother's side, informing her that I expected them all to attend my wedding in three days. The shock upon their face was priceless when I casually mentioned that they should be dressed their best. Well, the way it all ended does not sit quite right with me, but I doubt they will be reverting to their old ways anytime soon. It'll take them an eternity to emerge from behind bars. In the meantime, Charlie and I are forging ahead, building a brand new life together. Eventually, I decided to rent out my old family home to a sweet elderly couple. Charlie and I ensured that they lacked nothing, taking care of all their needs and sprucing up the place with timely renovations. Honestly, having this outlet to vent my frustration has been a blessing in disguise. Top comments from the updates. Comment number one. If only they'd understand the point at the very beginning. Trust me when I say this. Families can be either the strongest point of your life or the weakest and the most toxic point. There's really no in between. I've been dealing with toxic parents all my life. And honestly, reading your post has made me feel that I need to confront them finally. I cannot live like this anymore. Give me strength, guys. Obviously, I will not go to extreme levels as OP did, but you all get my point. Well, let me know what you think. Comment number two. Don't get me wrong, but that was a little too much. I mean, come on. Landing your own mother and sister in jail. Where do you all grow up so nasty? And now you're laughing at them? What's wrong with your head? I'll pray for your mom and sister. I hope when they come out of jail, they find better people to spend their time with than a daughter and sister like you. Shame on you. So guys, reading some of these comments that were involved in the original post in the update, it just seems like some of the commenters were not very happy with how Ava went about handling this. But I'm not gonna lie, there were a lot of commenters who said Ava handled this perfectly. So I'm coming to you guys to ask this question. Do you think Ava went too far? when she gave the address, knowing it was going to set up her mother and sister to basically be arrested with a bunch of police officers at the house. Let me know your thoughts, exactly what you would have done differently, or do you think, well, OP handled it pretty well? Let me know. My name's Mr. Redito, and I narrate stories every single day, so if you guys want daily videos, this is the best way to get it. Number one, subscribe to the channel. Number two, drop a comment down below. And number three, smash that like button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.